Guys, this podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Wrestling Collector Shop. The next time you're looking to add the newest wrestling figures to your lineup, you've got to go to WrestlingCollectorShop.com. Started by collectors for collectors around the globe, Wrestling Collector Shop has been serving fans the latest and greatest in wrestling action figures since 2002. Whether you're looking for basics, elites, or ultimates, Wrestling Collector Shop should be your first stop the next time you're looking for wrestling figures. So make sure to go to WrestlingCollectorShop.com and use code SWOGGLE to save yourself 10% on your order. Again, that's 10% off with code SWOGGLE only at WrestlingCollectorShop.com. This is two episodes in a row. Two episodes of Going Postal in a row that you're getting a small talk. But before we go any further, guys, this is Going Postal. I'm Dylan. That's George. George, talk to them. What's going on, everybody? Yeah, like Dylan said, back-to-back small talks here. We're trying something different, seeing if you guys like the small talks more, if you guys like the... Career retrospective of Dylan Postel, better known to the world as Swaggle Moore. Uh, it will probably still be a nice mix of both, but we wanted to try something different here. And honestly, Dylan's just banging out these interviews like uh, it's nobody's business because he's a professional, consummate professional. God damned professional, George. There you go. We all knew it. Now you're just showing the masses. Uh, but this podcast is brought to you by our friends over at Wrestling Collector Shop. Make sure to use code SWOGGLE. Save yourself 10%. Dylan's rocking the shirt. Say something so the shirt is nice and big on the screen. Wrestling Collector Shop, that's the shirt I got on. There you go. And make sure to follow along on all forms of social media at Dylan Postel and at Going Postal Pod. And hey, while you're at it, why not follow at Affairs Pod and at Pod. And at the Joe Shoes, because Dylan, you have another podcast now. I'm banging out podcasts like nobody's business. Between this one, between state of affairs, I'm a busy man. I mean, what don't I'm you do? Man. Two podcasts, you're doing interviews, you're doing travel blogs, you're doing blogs, figure unboxings. Blogs, blogs. Blog, uh, sorry, sorry, video diaries. No, you said blogs with a B. Oh, vlogs, but they're not vlogs. I'm not they're doing. I'm diaries. not over here doing MySpace posts. Maybe, telling about maybe, my weekend. Hey, maybe maybe you are. Maybe you're doing a MySpace update. What are we breaking this week on the podcast, Dylan? I'm what are you throwing a, up? I'm in throwing there? a coaster. Okay, so uh, you're breaking. Wait, I'm, you're I'm throwing, throwing, throwing a coaster. coaster? Huh? You're throwing a coaster? Yeah, I was throwing it. I like I like Boomer Dylan Postel, big coaster thrower. Uh, there used to be this game. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dylan hold Postel on. hates koozies, loves coasters. I don't like using coasters. I hate using coasters. Uh, a couple things. There, there's I. I own a, a bunch of coasters for my downstairs bar because Finley and I, Finley would play a game overseas where you put the the thing the 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 coaster on the end of a bar on the end of a bar, and you use the under part of your hand and you flip it. And you have to catch it like that. So now okay. you're at one. And then you put two up there. And you catch it and you grab two. Now you put three. And you see how many you can get. What's your record? I don't remember. But What's I, Finley's record? I feel like I he's probably got it. I don't remember my record. I don't remember his. Well, I don't know. Maybe you're just like, oh, I got ten. But Finley got like got like I remember, 20 something. I, I do remember. So, like, no, it 20 was coasters definitely over, is ridiculous. Someone amount. got over 20 for sure. That's a, that's a ridiculous it's a good, amount of coasters. It's a good stack. Yeah. But that was that was always a fun thing that we played. So uh, I, I just bought a bunch of coasters one day for my bar, and we've never done it since. We've never ever done it down there. We uh-huh. play karate fighters in my bar. I love. That's always our New Year's thing. Every year we do a karate fighters tournament, and it's it's like the highlight of the New Year's party. We always push it until like ten thirty, eleven, and uh, it's always a good time. All right. That's not what this is about. No, what I was going to say is let the people know, because uh, this whole tangent State that we just went on. 
State of spawned Affairs. from the State of Affairs podcast. Tell the people what it's about. State of Affairs is a uh, is a podcast that's very similar. I'm a I'm a huge fan of Taste Buds, uh, and it's kind of an off. It's it's like a it's a mix of Taste Buds mixed with my uh, my hot takes and everything in between. Um, where we debate on a topic that George gives us right before we record, literally. Minutes before we record, George sends us the topic, and we just go. Um, there is no that, and that's so we can't do any research about said topic. There's no prepared statements. There's no, yeah, it's literally just our feelings. So the first episode, the pilot episode, was about deli, about delis, about deli sandwiches. I am very passionate that if you go for a sandwich or if you order a sandwich, you should not go out out of your way to get a cold meat sandwich. And I believe we have talked about that. We talked oh, it was a hot podcast. take. It was a yeah. hot take, yeah. And uh, and we got into it on the first episode, which will debut next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, April the 10th. Mark your calendars. Follow at Affairs Pod on all forms of social media. Man, this is going to be a fun one. This is going to be a fun, fun project that uh, that the three of us and Caruse are all involved in. It's a uh, it's a lot of fun. We're going to have fun with it. And uh, Pod Exchange, we're all part of the Pod Exchange family, and it's just it's a uh, big things are to come. Big things are to come, and I truly can't wait. Um, the, the, we've got that episode, and we have another one in the can, and both of them have been absolutely just like I feel my blood pressure just boiling because of how Maddie makes me at multiple points in both episodes. Yeah, it's uh it's it's gonna be a, I, I hope you I really truly hope you guys all listen and you guys all enjoy it and uh let us know. Yeah. And for those of you who are a part of the March boozing with the toys in the major wrestling figure podcast Facebook group uh smart mark assisted in yeah. giving a small sample of what that podcast would be like uh it was, it was a lot of fun a lot of uh a lot of strong opinions in that chat and i feel like that's gonna kind of be the the whole setup for the the whole run of the show really is gonna be some people are gonna be team dylan some people are gonna be team shoes and I, who knows maybe we'll have to get shirts made up yeah but i have i also have a feeling that like there's going to be a couple episodes where we actually agree on the topic, like fully agree on the topic, and then it's just us hating on the opposite end. I'm going to confine you guys to a time limit so that you always have that in the back of your head, and I think that will just make you matter. And it the seems time limit to- kind of went out the window at the first episode. Oh, because- yeah. But it's going to be there in the back of your head because it's in the notes. We can't go too far. (laughs) We can't go too long. And it's because the two of us are very easily like, all right, I'm going to get all my shit in in a very quick amount of time. Now you go. You have nothing. And then that guy fires back. It's It's a wild ride. It's the wildest ride in the wilderness, as Big Thunder Mountain has said. All right. Well, with with that, Dylan. Mountain of Podcasts. I, I think there's nothing else to do but to throw to your interview with. I got a do- I, I got a doctor on the pod, uh, a legit doctor, a, a practicing chiropractor, a, a back cracker. Um, this was a fun one. This is one that you actually you had the idea for because the the YouTube shorts they're not TikToks. The YouTube shorts have been coming out of uh, Doctor Bo Hightower working on me. Those have been re-releasing lately, and so it's like a trip down memory lane for that, but also like just getting to know Dr. Bo. And coming off the Nick Nemeth episode, which guys, peek behind the curtain. If it came off that I was incredibly nervous during that one, I was. I was very, very nervous and very uncomfortable because it's, again, it's my buddy, but it's like, oh, man, I don't. I think that's all it was. And that's our relationship isn't, hey, let's sit down and talk. Our relationship is, okay, we just sit down and talk. 
Um, but man, it was uh, that 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 Nick episode. I hate calling him, and that pisses me off. That episode was just a blast, and it really, really was fun. A lot of people are enjoying it, which I love. Uh, but this one, this one is going to be a lot of fun in itself. You get to know how we got into this whole crazy, crazy world of uh, not only of the chiropractic, but of being a YouTube sensation. And it, it gives some peeks behind the curtain of how to grow your channel, like the love you have to put in, the belief in yourself, and how your channel has to just, it, it can take a while. And it's kind of just, it's not an overnight thing, uh, 99% of the time. So, I hope you enjoy! Are you a fan of Disney? Pixar, Jurassic Park, The Office, or even WWE, or maybe you just want a sleek and comfortable pattern shirt, then you need to check out Roosevelt's.com. R-S-V-L-T-S dot com today. Roosevelt's makes the most eye-catching and comfortable shirts going today. Whether it's button-ups, or polos, or hoodies, or even hats, and everything in between, Roosevelt's truly has something for everyone. Made for those with the love of sports, pop culture, and so much more. And above all else, having a kick-ass time. This clothing is for the bold and fun for those who dare mighty things. Roosevelt's.com. Check them out. You know, Dusty Rhodes once said he will make a back crack and a liver quiver. And this man actually does that. Dr. Bo Hightower, I've got a doctor on the show. Hi, buddy. How are you? What's going on, man? You staying warm up there? Uh, I, no. It, we just <laughs> got three inches of snow last night when it's oh. been, you know, in the last week, it's been in the 60s at some days. And then today it decided, hey, it's going to snow. That's Wisconsin. That's, uh, I mean, you don't get any of it. So you, you know nothing of this, which is uh, lucky and a curse. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's like seventy five here, I think, something like that. Oh, that's rough. Just a rough life down in New Mexico. That's that's just rough. It's cool to us, you know. <laughs> seventy five. <laughs> it's all relative, so right? Get, getting into it, uh, I I did a little bit of research on you, and I read in that chiropractic was not the original plan that you had in mind. You were going to school for biology. Did I see that right? Yeah, yeah, my first degree is a biology degree. Yeah, and so was chiropractic not on the 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 future plan at all? Uh, not until I got done with school. Um, you know, I started originally. I wanted to be a veterinarian, and okay. uh, you know, there's not there's not a ton of vet schools, and it's actually like the least compensated like healthcare field, like on average. Which is crazy because, like, every time you have something go on with your pet, it, it's like an arm and it's a leg. It's so expensive. It's so yeah. expensive. Yeah. But, like, for the education and the cost of their education, um, and it's, you know, a lot of times it's actually more competitive than medical school. Um, so it just the, 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 the numbers weren't really making sense for me. So I started looking at pharmacy, um, you know, started talking to pharmacists and people like that. And I actually enrolled in school. And um, before my first semester ended, I, I, I stopped because uh basically like at the time and i don't know if this is still true but like they said over 90 percent of jobs are retail pharmacy jobs so like okay at walgreens and you know yeah. having to yeah. yell at you because their insurance doesn't cover your medication <laughs> yeah. and i just you know the the pharmacists that i knew seemed they make good money they make really good money but they seem like their lifestyle is just miserable like they just get yelled at all day and you know uh it, it when you think and and when you think of a pharmacist, that's exactly what you think of is that exact thing, like you said, the Walgreens, where it's just their their prescription isn't in or or all of that, and that's not that's not what they go to school for. They're going to school to to deal with it, not to deal with the, the people. And I know there's like there's obviously clinical jobs in hospitals and things like that, but you know I think those are more rare than the the retail jobs. And so um, yeah, yeah, I had a chiropractor in high school, and and. Um, you know, like growing up in the 90s, you would hear like the 49ers and the Cowboys, you know, Jerry Rice and, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Franco Colombo was a chiropractor. Yeah. And, um, you know, as somebody who was doing football and bodybuilding and stuff, you know, just being able to work with athletes and, um, you know, not have to deal with blood all day, every day or, you know, um, it, it seemed like my chiropractor had a pretty nice life. Like he 
he played golf a couple times a week. He worked half days, two, three days a week, you know, and uh, he seemed happy with his job. So I was like, that, yeah. that seems like a, uh, something I might be interested in. And uh, so that's, that's why I went that way. So obviously now seeing uh, how you do your chiropractic and with the, the content on, on your channel and all of that, how does it go from the standard chiropractic to what you do with the, the tools you use? Well, I'm also a napropath. So I have a doctor in napropathic medicine. Okay. Um, so napropaths are connective tissue specialists. And so um, some of that is like to potment. It's a, it's a, a reflex that basically deactivates muscles and things like that. And then, uh, yeah, I was, I, I'm in an MMA gym. So I'm in Jackson Wink right now. So there's people punching each other in the face, like right outside my door. And um, <laughs> one, of the, one of the really cool things about that is that we have fighters from all over the world, from mm -hmm. the Netherlands, from China, from Mongolia, you know, you name it. And many of them bring their healers with them here. They have somebody that, that they see in their country and uh, they'll fly them in. And I'm able to learn a lot of new techniques and just, you know, add things to my repertoire. And one of them was uh, a fighter named Alistair Overeem. He's from Holland. And um, his his personal like body worker from over there is a, he's a medical doctor named Yan Yan uh, De Bruin I believe is his name, and he's the one that uh, he he actually gave me um, some of his chisels and and basically mentored me in some of the hammer chisel stuff, which of course I I thought was silly at first until he did it on me and actually great results as a patient. Um, so yeah, that, that you know just just snagging little techniques from um, from different healers and experts from around the world and and. You know, trying to keep what what works and throw out what doesn't, and uh, yeah, that's how. Uh, I did the, <laughs> did, yeah, did the did the people that that you were in the the chiropractor school with, and that have they gotten a hold of you and been like, hey, how how did it turn? How did you develop like that those tools, or did they ask about the tools you use and that kind of thing? Um, so you know, we it is taught in our naturopathic school, yeah, but. I think a lot of people having heard my interviews have like uh, they've they've reached out to him and bought tools from him because I see them popping yeah. up all over the place now. Um, okay. So yeah, I've seen at least How at least people you know you know with with customized uh, punches yeah. and chisels. Yeah, yeah. How does it turn from normal chiropractic uh, practice and that to hey, I think people would like to see this. And and going to social media and and YouTube with it. What's the accident. what's the thought behind that? It was a complete accident. Um, oh. You know what? <laughs> yeah. So uh, my wife was like a social media influencer, like first. Like when we first started dating, she had I think she was like a you know like a fitness model sponsored yeah kind of person. So she had like a million followers like when on Instagram like 2013 or 14, and. um you know, obviously she had recognized the value in like getting sponsors and things, you know, before I ever did. Um, so she was, she was trying to do YouTube before and I would make fun of her and laugh and be like, this is dumb. Like, what are you trying to do? Yeah. You know, like, like everyone does at first. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, Wait a second. Yeah. I think, I think most of us have had that moment at some point. Uh, and so, uh, you know, being, you know, I've worked with MMA fighters for 15 years essentially. And so there was just, um, there was a moment in time where like, there's like an ASMR, um, almost like pipple popping with, with back cracking and people get relaxation out of watching yeah. uh, the videos. So there was a moment there. And then there was a moment of me having like fighters. So it was two audiences kind of overlapping. Um, and so uh, there was a fighter. I can't remember who it was. Um, it was probably Diego Sanchez. And he's like, Hiller, film this. And we put it up on Instagram when they first started adding videos. And the video got like 2 million views, like right off the bat. And we did it again. And it got like 3 million views. And we we're like, whoa, what's this? So my, my IG started growing, even though it wasn't making money. And then I got banned from Instagram in 2016 or 18. Whenever the UFC sold, they had okay. um, they they put like a hardcore copyright tool in, like right before they sold to the TKO group, which owns WWE now as well. Yep. And so if you had any of their clips on like any of your platforms, they basically like flagged every single one. So I got hit with like the 10 from copyrights. like the fights in that. Yeah. 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 So I would I would repost like clips of the fights on my IG, like fighters that I worked with, like congratulations on the win. And uh yeah, they hit me with a like nine, ten copyright strikes like back to back. Like to where it deleted okay. the channel completely. So yeah. um yeah, so I had I'd been posting, so I had like this itch of posting. So then I just I put the same vertical videos on YouTube when they took off there. 
uh, like 10, 12 million views. And I was like, whoa, what's that? And, you know, I left a lot of money on the table at the time because I didn't know you could put uh, in in video ads back then. Yeah. yeah. So like, probably a third of the money I should have made on the first year because, uh, you know, I didn't know any YouTubers really. Yep. Um, at the time to give me, you know, put me on game. And so, yeah, we put them up there and it was like 10 million, 8 million, 7 million. And like next thing I knew, I had, you know, 500,000 subs over there. Um, so obviously, oh, I eventually wow. got my camera back. Um, yeah. You know, luckily, you know, treating the, the, the big name people that I do, like they have connections. So I was able to actually get a meeting with the president of Instagram. <laughs> uh, so we were able to get the account back, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, Is, if that didn't happen, I probably never would have posted on YouTube. Um, if you, you know, wouldn't have gotten your yeah, account back, you're saying? Yeah, but maybe I would have, and yeah. it like the moment would have already passed. You know, if you if you jump into something too late, it's you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember the first like guest or name uh, that really was like, oh man, this was this was a, a like a cool reaching out moment. Like, did you reach out to them or did they reach out to you? Uh, for the first really guest on it. I know you said you worked with, you know, you worked in MMA and, and with the UFC fighters a lot in the beginning right away. But yeah. do you remember the first one that you kind of like the, the first big one? Man, that's a good question. Um, you know, for, what, what tends to happen is there's, there's like uh, wrestlers or like um, musicians who watch fighting or some that do both, right? Like Bobby Lashley, yeah. for example, or, or Goldberg, the trains and Muay Thai or, or things yep. like that. And so those guys, you know, were following UFC pages or UFC fighters. And so they would kind of reach out to me. Um, so, yeah, there, I mean, there's been quite a few for me, like as a, a kid growing up in the 90s that, you know, Roy Jones was a, was an awesome one. Um, Vander Holyfield. Um, you know, I grew up as a pretty big Goldberg fan as yeah. well. So that was that was a fun one. Um, you know, we're talking about when I was like a teenager, like some of these other guys popped when I was like in college, which I understand how big they are, but it, it's not quite the same impact as like, uh, you know, being an eighth grader or seventh same grader. personal impact to you. Yeah. 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 So those, are, those, those three and maybe like ludicrous would be some of the ones that were like, um, you know, having them reach out and then be like, Oh, yeah. cool. This is, you know, Hey, will you come work on me? And I'd be like, okay, can we film it? And they're like, all right, cool. And, uh, yeah. So that was, yeah. Do you remember in the, in the beginning time going back to the, you know, the, the, the growth of the YouTube channel and that, do you remember the first like moment where the YouTube channel was like, or where you, you felt the channel was like, Oh man, this is taking off. Like, this is a, this is more than just posting videos. Like, and it's not just like the ASMR, but people are really, really interested in what I'm doing. Yeah. There was a couple of moments. Like for one, um, you know, uh, like I said, my wife had been trying to do YouTube. So she had like, uh, she had a friend who was a, a actual videographer. Cause before we were just shooting vertical stuff on our, you know, yeah, a 35 second thing on my camera, you know, and I still have an Android, so I don't have the, the best camera in the world. Um, <laughs> so uh, my friend Brandon Crespin uh, is a videographer and he was trying to break into the industry and make a name for himself. He's like, hey, man, I'll, I'll film some of your stuff for free. Just, you know, uh, tag me in the, the videos and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, so we had, we had gotten a few big ones here at the gym. Just, you know, like I said, fighters, John Jones, Diego Sanchez, um, you know, Cowboy Cerrone, Overeem, Orlovsky and, and things like that. Um, but then, you know, my wife, again, she, she was with a, a nutrition company. And so that company, I think was NLA for her and they had, you know, they had five or six fitness models as well. And so, you know, we were like, Hey, do you guys want to be in a video? And, uh, you know, we, we posted those ones and they had eight, 10, 12 million views on them. Yep. Um, so we were like, wait, we've got these two buckets of, of, uh, things to pull from pro athletes. And then, you know, my wife's, uh, uh fitness model friends yeah. who influencer who friends yep. brand as well and it was just like boom 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 so those those videos kind of blew up all around the same time and then um right around that i think i can't remember who the first wrestler probably i think it was, it was either... lash no i think it was ryback and then lashley yeah it might have been ryback so ryback reached out to me uh and you know he lives in vegas and so we were out there and then uh and then ryback connected me with miro and cj perry cool. yep yeah and then and then Bobby had reached out to me as well. So those were kind of like our first. And it was just like this other pool, you know, WWE and, and just wrestling AEW in general yeah. has such a huge social media footprint. I mean, I think I think it's WWE insane. just hit a hundred million subs. It's you it's, know, it's it's crazy to me. Even you know when I was there, uh, and, and all my time, you know, doing stuff with them, 
I don't, you don't realize just how big it is. And then to hit a hundred million subscribers, it's like, man, I, I, you can't, it just, the, and that's just subscribers. Like that's not people just clicking on videos. That's just subscribe. Like the reach, the absolute reach that all wrestling has nowadays is it's crazy to me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for somebody who's in the MMA world, you think of, you know, UFC is on ESPN now and stuff. You think of it as big and you look at the sub numbers comparatively and like UFC doesn't even hold a candle to the social media footprint that WWE has. And, you know, AEW and, and even, you know, even some of the smaller organizations have really large footprints and yeah, uh, their they're short yeah, they're, they're, go really viral. You know, I think Kings Road Wrestling, their clips are always going viral. Yep. Um, there's a lot of smaller which, organizations. Which you got to see those. You got to see like Kings Road and go, man, there's some, a lot of potential patients here. <laughs> <laughs> like, right <laughs> Like deathmatch to the extreme, like holy yeah. smokes! <laughs> you guys are, uh, yeah, they're, they're braver than I am. Let's just say that. So yeah, I, uh, I did what uh, yeah. eye opening too is how big those videos, you know, hit. Because you know, uh, I, I I casually watch wrestling now, you know, yeah. particularly like my friends that are on or whatever, and I watch the big events, yeah, uh, you know, the, the the three or four big events a year. But it's not like when, you know, when I was growing up where I'm tuning every every Monday night for the Monday Night Wars. Um, you know, you, you, you get older and you just get busy. And uh, so it, I think, in my mind, I had, yeah. I had forgotten how wrestling really was until social media brought it back to me and opened my eyes. You, If you take yourself away with your busyness and your schedule of it, you don't notice it until like exactly what you said. It comes back in your life and almost like, and now it's in in and now it's like there's no letting go because of algorithms and everything crazy with how how social media and the internet works it's just always around you then and you're always going to see it yeah and frankly like um you know some of what made i think the ufc important um or at least big 10 years ago was the the copying of course of wwe where you had guys and girls who had like signature looks and and like uh walkout songs and styles and, you know the, they finally yeah. had characters like and I think that's been wiped out by the corporatization of it. And I find myself actually, if I'm going to watch one or the other, I, you know, the, the, some of the storylines going on right now, particularly in AEW and WWE, are, are actually more interesting to me than any storyline in the UFC, really. Yeah, Connor Connor McGregor is like the, uh, one of the only real like characters. Him and 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 uh, Patty Patty Pimbelt, is it? Yeah, Patty. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, them are they're like the only two real like character characters in there that really if you're not a follower of the sport, you can just be a follower of them because they're they're nuts and they're they're just kind of they're they're crazy. And and they they bring they have a presence compared to just guys coming into the cage and beating each other up. Where, you know, 10 years ago when they had their uniforms, you know, you know, Cowboy Cerrone was like here's this cowboy guy and then the Diaz brothers were like these like you know, Cholo gangsters yep. and uh, you know, they, they, they all had like specific George St. Pierre had his like blue black belt shorts and uh, you know, he'd come out in his karate uniform, his, uh, uh, his gi. And so there was just like, I think, I think a lot more character, like character uniqueness and development. And uh, you, you recognize the, 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 the uniform and the, the walkout yeah. music. And like I said, you know, now that it's been sold and corporatized, I just, it, I don't feel that anymore, and I don't think the cards are as big as they used to be. And uh, obviously, under new creative leadership, I think WWE has recapitalized. Um, you know, I think I think the Cody story has been very interesting. Um, obviously, you know, having the biggest star in Hollywood, The Rock, come back and like actually you can't beat that. Actually, be you working, can't beat it. <laughs> actually, be working and then like Weekly? kind of heels. Well, I... Like, <laughs> it, I mean, boy. it's way bigger. Now. I mean, it's huge. It's huge. Like I'm, I'm actually turning in and and you know watching SmackDown yeah. and Raw now, which like I said, I was watching the pay per views, but now I'm like tuning in weekly to you know SmackDown in particular, and yeah. I'm like, oh, what's what's going to go on now? And those clips are going so viral. You talk about the social reach, and it is bigger. Obviously, it's just it's bigger than ever. The social reach when you have, I always say, when you can bring up someone on on the show at the gas station in, in you know in my town of Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and they go, Oh yeah, I saw that. That was great. You know it's hitting everybody. Yeah. It's literally hitting my dad, when my dad messages me about it, you know it's hitting everybody. Okay. And it's the ninth sellout in a row for a TV. You weren't having that, you know, months ago. It's crazy how how big it's getting again. It's 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 absolutely but wrestling all around. Wrestling even at the independent yeah. level that I'm at wrestling is just 
it's mega huge right now and it's just it's almost like it's attitude era level without uh, but like not needing the blood and guts and the constant cussing and boobs like it's just it's it's just at a cool level it's it's wrestling i keep saying like wrestling is cool again and it's yeah that's, that's literally what it is i agree you know i'm, I'm 40 um, years old and here i am you know t- yeah. tuning in to watch wrestling and i i don't think i would have ever you know 10 years ago guessed that about myself no but i'm definitely so, you know definitely doing it. when you uh when you got when you guys approached me i looked into the channel and i was like you know what i'm gonna be honest with you I don't know about this. The hammer and the chisel, it's got to be a gimmick. It's got to be something. And I was proven a million percent wrong, as we saw in the video in that. Uh, Were there others that stand out that were like, that you proved wrong, that almost had like a, ah, shit. Okay, I'm I'm completely blown away by this practice. I don't know. That's a good question, because, you know, most people are not going to vocalize that. Um, oh, I hundred percent. I I I fully thought this is gonna be because it's it's I mean, if we're if we're being honest, it's a different practice than I'm used to, you know that I'm used to seeing from Kairos and that and then and that that like that line of work. So I was like, man, this is gonna be something. But then it it fully changed me. It fully fully did. So I yeah yeah. There's got to be. I, I thought for sure like someone would have vocalized like, man, that that was completely different than i would have expected yeah i mean people say that they feel great or whatever but you know most people aren't going to be like yeah i don't i don't you know if they're that skeptical usually they're just going to be like yeah i'll pass you know i don't okay yeah 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 i mean like i said we've had a few we've had a few surgeons on the channel that you know uh they were intrigued but like incredibly skeptical and you know uh not that they wanted to debate or whatever, but they were you know, maybe a little confrontational at first, but then, you know, we, we oh. work on him. And, oh, yeah, that was a lot better than I thought. So, you know, I think we've had like four orthopedic surgeons uh, on the channel and a couple of PMR doctors and people like that. So, you know, uh, did you know going it's gonna... into it? Did you feel yeah. going into it that they, that they were yeah, yeah. like questioning of it? Sure. Yeah. I mean, for sure. And especially yeah. like the clips online, obviously, my wife, you know, edits them to be you know, as sensational as possible, you know, to, you take yeah. the clips and you switch them out of, you take all the boring, you know, slow soft tissue stuff out of it. Um, Cause you know, you're, you're, you're priming it for television essentially, right? Yeah. Like you just exactly the, 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 the actions and the cracks and the hammers and uh, you know, all the other stuff's on the cutting room floor. So, you know, they don't see the workup or the slow soft tissue or any of that kind of stuff. They only see, like I said, the out of context, you know, yep. the, the thing designed to grab somebody's attention and, and post it. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, you know, it's you know, yeah. We're, particularly with those people, being able to kind of explain the physiology behind it, and and, and uh, once they talk to you and realize like you're not just a blundering buffoon, you know, that you actually understand physiology fairly well and you're fairly educated. Um, it's not obviously, just, it, it, what, yeah, once they see that it's that you actually know what the fuck you're doing, kind of, like, then it's then it's yeah. completely different. Yeah, yeah. Has there been a patient? Or or any or any ones that you can think of that you've went into it almost not worrisome, but like, oh man, this is gonna be different. Like, you know, you got guys as big as Lashley or or in my case, or or you know what, a little older patients. Is there been any ones that you've had on the channel that you that you can think of that you've went into almost like not worried about but skeptical of? Yeah, there's just different stuff that you don't do on, on certain people, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, like some of the older older guys have like a lot of arthritis, or uh, they have fusions in their spines from wrestling, you know. Um, so, like, you, you can't do stuff like rotational adjustments, particularly on their neck. Um, I mean, I, I was trying to count on hand how many guys that I've that I've worked on who have had broken necks, you know, from not from yeah. fighting, from wrestling, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, or, or they've had fusion surgeries or things like that, that, uh, you know, you, you couldn't even if you wanted to rotationally adjust them because they're, they're fused. Um, and then secondarily, you, you wouldn't want to anyway, because, you know, theoretically, you could you could loosen up the, the hardware in there. Um, but some of them we could do some decompression on. But yeah, like, uh, you know, it's particularly the rotational adjustments we don't do on the guys in the 50s and 60s. And, you know, uh, yeah. So, and, and some of them even like they're like, I don't really like getting adjusted anymore. Um, you know, when I was in my thirties, twenties and thirties and forties, it was okay. But like 
their discs are so narrow now that there's just nothing to move. And so we just don't do that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of, you just, you modify based on the previous injuries, based on the demographics, based on the age. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of, you know, and there's, and there's certain people that are like contraindications. Like if you have like rheumatoid arthritis or Marfans or things like that, then, you know, we would only do soft tissue work and, uh, and yeah, like I said, there's some people that just don't do well with cracking. And so we just don't do it, you know? Um, yeah. I, I hated and still don't like Cairo it's because of my back issues and because of just the constant worry of, man, he's going to crack me and everything is going to go crazy because of my surgeries. But it was so much more than that. And that's like, you were talking about it earlier, how what's edited and for the videos and the content is what's going to hit on that. But our visit was like so much more and so much like feeling muscles in my body that I've never felt in my armpit. There's, there's the, the clip of the armpit and it's just like how I, f it was the craziest feeling I've ever felt. And just so many things that weren't even like, that were like just talked about. They, I wish I could explain like how important what you do like and, and the work you do is to people because especially in active sports it, we don't realize how different our bodies uh, in different spots get beat up and get tense and oh. need not you know unknotting and all of that so it's very very it was a very very neat experience and I, I'm I'm sure you've had that with many of your patients not realizing just what how deep you can go into them, you know, yeah, yeah. no pun intended. That's thing, like, <laughs> you know, being, being a napropath, like the, the bread and butter of my practice is soft tissue work. It's, it's deep tissue. You mm -hmm. know, some people call it like fascia distortion or, or deep trigger point or uh, active release technique or things like that. But, you know, basically every single person that gets worked on like 70 to 80% of the work is, is getting in there and breaking up the, the adhesions and the tight muscles. And then if we need to mobilize the joints, then, then we do. And if we don't, we don't. And, um, you know, if we want to move a, a joint a specific direction, getting it linearly helps a lot, too. So, um, but yeah, like like you said, like the really slow kneading soft tissue work, it's kind of boring. It takes a long time. You know, most of, most of the sessions are, you know, well over an hour long. Um, but obviously, we're not going to post a video that's an hour and 45 minutes long because people's attention span. Um, and it, even like conversationally, like I can't. I'm physically working. You're physically get beating up. You know, you you're you are a great guest because you're you're just a good talker and and you're hilarious. But not everybody's that way, and they'll just be so like in their own body that I'll ask them a question and they'll give me a one word answer. And like we, we can't put that out there. It's you know no. it's boring. It's you know yeah um, yeah, yeah. So yeah a lot of that a lot of that is left on the cutting room floor, and we we edit it down to as much interesting stuff as we can. The the quotables, you know, some of the loud cracks, some of the yep. you know that kind of stuff. And so yeah, uh, you know. It's not necessarily reflective of our day to day practice, but again, we're you know we're we're not publishing stuff online uh, to not get views, right? We're we're all trying to get views. That's that's the only reason we're doing. Yeah, yeah, for the content. With that, you are incredibly busy, obviously, in your practice and in your your day to day life. Um, with your practice, how do you make time for the content? <sighs> we, we we don't <laughs> often, uh, you know. Uh, like what we'll usually do is we'll we'll try to set up a location and and again to make to make it worth its while you know financially you know especially nowadays it's a little tougher to get the views anymore um just the the platforms are saturated so you know if you spend a thousand dollars traveling and your video only takes eight hundred dollars that the math isn't really mathing there so yeah um, oftentimes what we'll try to do say we go to Orlando we'll try to line up like five or six wrestlers um we'll get an Airbnb and we'll just do one every day or two a day. Um, and, and try to make that work. Um, you know, it, in Albuquerque, like a lot of times, so like Ludacris, for example, he was filming a movie here. So he was just coming to get treatment every day. And he like, you know, the A-listers don't need our social media uh, attention. That's one thing I appreciate about wrestlers is they understand what, you know, what the rub really means and yeah. just keeping your name relevant. You know, musicians and actors and people like that, they, they just don't, they don't value it in the same way. They got, um, they have the money coming in no matter what. Their their name is always out there. Yeah, so they're just you know it doesn't do it doesn't do anything for them. If you have ten million followers, you know, getting a million views on a YouTube video doesn't really mean anything to you. So like yep. like with Ludacris, for example, he just he did it as a favor to me because he was so happy with the work that we had been doing over time. But his manager oh, didn't great. want to do it, and you know, like 
you know, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, uh, that's awesome we, that we, he went, that he, that he just went and, and did it on his own. Kind yeah. Of thing. So, you know, we treat a lot of big time A list actors here because they film a lot of Netflix movies here, but like basically, yeah. like, five percent of them are willing to do any content you know they'd rather just pay you double in and that's great you know, have you yeah they'd rather pay me 250 dollars for a session compared to 100 dollars uh and they don't you know they don't want because you know they they manicure and curate their image and their their managers do so much um but yeah, yeah. I've, I've probably had like a good 15 to 20 like big time a-listers like consistently awesome. come to treatment and like you just like there's nothing Unless they sign a media release, like I can't post that they're here. I can't. Yep. I can't take a picture with them. I can't post a video, and so you know it doesn't really it doesn't really do anything for you know my brand for yeah uh, you know content where you know fighters you know particularly everybody in the TKO brand especially right like fighters wrestlers they understand the importance of like staying in interviews and and uh, keeping their name relevant in that sort of way too, and they just use it as a as another platform either to build their own brand like their their you know merch or their their podcasts or whatever uh, or just to you know keep their social media profiles up so they can leverage that for their next contract or to keep the fans interested um you know you guys are smart in that way where you know i think some other sports now they i guess they don't have to be if you're in the nfl it doesn't matter because you know you've got a fat guaranteed contract you know yeah um so maybe they're, it's by necessity they're getting yeah they're that. getting they're getting themselves pushed they don't have a brand i guess their brand is them but their contract that it's not like it, it, our brand is what makes us money and we gotta if we don't keep that high that's what ma- that we lose some money right you know you guys go to signings and you know that kind of yeah. stuff and that's that's uh like industry standard where like you know nba players or whatever like they're not, they're not i guess maybe you know i've seen a few actually now that i say that like some of the really old guys that have blown through all their money yeah or maybe well, they, they, yeah they work 100%. In the seventies and eighties, you know, I'm sure you probably see yep. it with the the side. You're like, oh, sweet, yep. like, yeah. Chicago, there was a Chicago uh, sports uh, convention last weekend, and it was jammed, absolutely jammed. And man, when they had a Rodman there or a Sammy Sosa there, the Chicago guys, it was yeah. insane for them. That makes sense. But yeah, but I think I think maybe you guys were at the front edge of it. But I think like NBA, a lot of the NBA players are doing podcasts now. I saw yeah. Max Crosby and like the Kelsey brothers are doing podcasts. So, yeah. you know, I think they're all starting to understand, you know, uh, their career is limited and, and, you know, what do they do to either maximize their brand now or, you know, create something in the future? It can't last forever. And when you, if you start it too late, you're coming in, you're, you're, I think it comes across as out on your luck instead of just doing it because you like doing it. You know what I mean? Like Kelsey, uh, Jason just announced his retirement. But they've already had the podcast for a couple, you know, for for a hot minute now. So that's still yeah. going to be popular, even if he, re, you know, when he's retired, because he's he's made that brand, that separate brand, aside from football. Right, and then like 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 you're doing, like because of your connection to the industry, you can you can pull big guests and you know pull pull big wrestlers on, yeah. and yeah, and that that's literally what this is. Is I've I've always I've said from the, the beginning. I want it to be people I enjoy talking to, people I, I have fun and that I can get a fun talk with. Um, and that's what it's about. I don't, I just want to, it's, it's the, I don't want the same song and dance interviews. And it's just, it's fun for me. And when it stops being fun, same as everything, we got to find something else. something else. Nice. Yeah. Awesome, man. Uh, well, not that you need to because you are blowing up more than ever at each and every time I see your stuff. Plug your stuff. Where can we see you? Where can we see your practices? Where can we find you? All of that. Oh, okay. Uh, well, if you want to get treated by one of our providers, we have offices in Las Vegas. We have three in Albuquerque, one in South Florida. So you can you can go to elite-osm.com and book with one of our providers. Um, they're all either naturopaths or physical therapists, and they've they've all been trained in sort of the same same way that we have. Uh, and any, anything else? I guess just it's my name, Bo Hightower. You can find me on all platforms except for except for Snapchat. I think is the only one I'm not on killing it absolutely killing it each and every literally each and every clip i see is just blowing up so thank you thanks for uh getting my name out there again i i I, every literally every every appearance i make there hasn't been one i bet in the last since we did literally since we did it that hasn't brought up man did he really 
how, how did that really feel? And it literally goes, it was the best. It was the best. It was the absolute best adjustment ever. Because I went into it, like I said earlier, I went into it skeptical. Um, and thinking, man, I don't know. And I've been to Kairos, like I say, especially with all of my back issues. And I've been to it where it's, it's done nothing. Right. But it was the most like eye-opening experience, literally and physically, of like... <laughs> Just man, there are spots of my body that I didn't know it was there, and, and not in, in active sports, as active as I am, I guess uh, it, it's it's really neat that you can find places that uh for, for treatment. So thank well, you. And, like, and, and likewise, uh, you know, like I'm sure you saw the feedback. You know, you, you were definitely one of the most favorite guests we've had on for a while. I think you know, I think people that aren't really tuned into you and to other stuff. Uh, they didn't yeah. realize, like you know, how a how how good on the mic you are, because because you didn't get to be when you were you know in WWE. Exactly, that's what I say. I say, man, when I when I like flub in an interview, I said, oh, that's that's why WWE didn't let me talk. I'm not very good at it. But I, also, it's like, man, it killed me sometimes because I couldn't do interviews, or I would do like these radio spots, even while oh, I wasn't talking on WWE. They'd have me do radio spots or media, and they're like, why are we not? I remember Stephanie McMahon said. Why are we not having you talk? I said, "That's on you guys. Like that's that's yeah. <laughs> on me." <laughs> yeah. So he's hilarious. He's likable. He's knowledgeable. Like you know, he's quick witted, and like that. That's like a lot of the feedback that I got on the video. They're like, that's, oh man, Dill is awesome. I mean, and so uh, yeah, so there was a lot of a lot of really great feedback on that one. You were definitely uh, one of the favorite uh, guests in the last year or two. Thank you, man. Uh, I, how was the dog whisper? Give me the, give me the scoop on Caesar Milan. I need, I need the, what, what, what was it? I, give me the scoops. That's, that's, the scoop? that'll be the ending, the ending. How oh. was he? How did that one come about? That, that'll be, that'll be the close of the show. <laughs> I, I, love the, yeah, I think uh, to me, that was the most random guest that you had yeah. on. Yeah. We, he, I probably worked with him for four or five years now. We'll go out there a couple okay. times a year, work with him. And, uh, I, I don't know how he reached out to me, but I don't remember how or when it was. Yeah. Uh, you know, same kind of thing. Worked with him a few times. We're like, hey, can we shoot a video? And so we went out to his ranch. And like, one of the coolest things about that experience was like, we took our dogs out there and he kind of like trained our dogs. And so it was like, you know, kind of a bucket list thing to get your dogs trained by Caesar Milan. Uh, oh, that's you know, really he, cool. he doesn't just take like random clients or whatever. You know, he yeah. works with like the, you know, all the, the Hollywood, you know, folks. And so, yeah, super, super cool guy. Like one of the most down to earth people, you know, got to spend a lot of time with them. You know, great chef, you know, great leader. Uh, love the guy like he's super awesome so um and then yeah he was able to to link me up with some other you know big name people too so um just a super super cool experience awesome well thanks man dr Bo, back cracking backs and and using his hammer in spots i didn't know were there thanks buddy selling crack on the internet (laughs) jesus guys let's talk about mad cat beard care They make my beard feel soft, silky smooth, and they can do the same for yours. A one-man show since 2019, Mad Cat uses a portion of their sales to care for local stray cats. That money covers their medical bills and finds them safe spaces and forever homes. Their products are made to order with vitamins and all natural oils that promote strong, healthy hair and moisturize your skin as well. They've got exclusive scents for myself, as well as other wrestlers like my good pal Brian Myers, Mr. Kennedy, and Ring of Honor legend Delirious. Make sure to check out all of their scents, along with my Swoggled scent, which has notes of lavender and sage. I absolutely love this scent. And guys, we've got an exclusive offer for listeners of Going Postal. Use promo code SWOGGLED to save yourself 15% on your orders only at madcatbeardcare.com. That is swoggled with a D on the end to save yourself 15% on your orders at madcatbeardcare.com. Guys, that's 15% with promo code swoggled. And remember, the Mad Cat makes a happy beard. As I said, he makes backs, cracks, and livers quiver. Easy for me to say. Dr. Bo cannot thank him enough for joining us. Joining us on the episode, um, it was fun. 
It really, I really, really enjoyed talking to him. A lot of things I obviously didn't know about him, uh, how he got into the profession and how he grew his channel and, and, and all of that. Um, he believed in himself. That's the biggest thing I, I took from the whole conversation is he really just the whole time believed in himself and he just did it because it was fun. I'm, I'm trying my best. I am trying my best to be prepared. Hell, man, hell of a, probably the best villain song in all of Disney. Be prepared. There's no question. I mean, th- we're going on a tangent again, but yes, it is and the And also, live action version of Be Prepared, so much. Guys, I, if you feel in 2024 and you can wake up every morning, Every morning, you can wake up after a good night's sleep, a great night's sleep. You might have taken a melatonin or a magnesium to sleep even deeper, and you can wake up to the sound of your alarm. You can get up. You can pretty much kip up out of bed, and if you can wake up and tell yourself that the cartoon version of The Lion King is better than the live action, you need to go back to bed because you woke up a liar. The live action Lion King is so much better so much better george i see it in your face we went on a tangent nostalgia doesn't make things good wrestlemania 6 ain't good wrestlemania 6 is good because of nostalgia live action disney versus cartoon disney is definitely going to be a state of affairs topic that's fine i'll only take i will only take lion king beauty and the beast it's going to be all live action versus all of cartoon and you and Shoes are going to debate that. I'm t- I telling you now. I don't think he'll pick one. I don't think he'll pick one live action. You know why? Because he doesn't have a brain in his head. That's why. If he <sighs> picks the cartoon version of Lion King, he does not have a brain in his head. Very simple. I said it and I meant it. I meant it when I said it. Very simple. Guys, thank you for enjoying. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, interview with Dr. Bo. You can follow this podcast on all forums of social media at going postal pod please if you have a second we would love it if you could make sure to subscribe if you could leave a rating and a review if you could comment on the youtube video if you could make sure to like leave a comment subscribe to the youtube youtube.com slash dylan postal and i would love it if you could smash that notification bell it really really helps the algorithm of the channel really helps the channel grow that's enough about me George, hit him with your plugs. Well, we already plugged uh, State of Affairs at Affairs Pod at the Joe Shoes. Uh, that's that. Then there's at Pod Exchange. That's at P O D X C H A N G E. And then in addition to those two shows, I also have another show. It is called the Game Marks Podcast. It is myself and former Creator Pro Champion Johnny Clash. But on this podcast, Dylan likes to refer to him as. <laughs> And we cover a different wrestling video game each and every week, breaking down the good, the bad, and the awesome of all things in that space. And you can follow along on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you choose to listen. We'd really appreciate it if you would check us out. But with that, Dylan, I need you to please do that signature sign off that you do. And for the love of God, Make sure the camera's on you. It's time for a three milligram cool mint upper lipper zipper, baby.